What's going on on my YouTube buddies? I'm Jacob with another movie review for you guys and welcome to another installment of my pre-1980 classic review series. Monthly theme this month of November being 1970s New Hollywood musicals. Earlier this month I reviewed Fiddler on the Roof. Today I'll be reviewing the 1972 musical that won eight Academy Awards including Best Director and Best Actress. Today's review is Cabaret. Before I go any further, I will leave a link down in the description below for all of the movies I've done in this pre-1980 series so far. I do distinct themed each month to a month, and I have a wide variety of classic movies that I've done on this channel so far. So if you're a fan of hardcore cinema and respect classic films, there's definitely something in that playlist you'll enjoy. So I'll leave the link down in the description below for you to see more. So Cabaret was released in 1972. It was directed by Bob Fosse, I think you pronounce his name. Cabaret is his best known film. Another famous movie he directed was the 1979 film All That Jazz, another movie I've heard nothing but great things about. The songs in Cabaret were written by John Kander and Fred Ebb, who also worked on the music for Chicago which became a musical adaptation in 2002. So in Cabaret, set inside the Kit Kat Club of 1931 Berlin, starry-eyed singer Sally Bowles and a master of ceremonies sound the call to decadent fun while outside a certain political party grows into a brutal force. Sally Bowles is played by Liza Minnelli and the master of ceremonies is played by Joel Grey and the movie also stars Michael York. Cabaret is an interesting little experience. It's definitely one of those musicals. It's made, it's definitely a musical film. There's musical numbers and there's choreography in there. It's not really filmed like a musical. So it's definitely an interesting little experience. I have a feeling that if you're not a hardcore musical fan, you're gonna love Cabaret, I think, because it feels like a legit historical drama movie with musical sequences in the film. All but one of the musical numbers take place inside the Kit Kat Club with regular performances. There's one musical number that takes place at a political rally headlined by the Nazis, and this is a, the Nazis' rise to power. But most of the movie's set in the Kit Kat Club, and that's where most of the musical sequences are headlined. And on a musical level, it's a fantastic achievement. I can see why the Academy ate this film up. The, the The choreography is polished and slick. There's some iconic songs in there. And especially when you have Liza Minnelli and Joel Grey headlining a lot of these numbers. There's some memorable sequences in there. And a lot of these songs I wasn't that familiar with. And I was impressed by a lot of the numbers. I mean, the sequences were well shot. Well, the cinematography was great, and there was even some well thought out social commentary in some of these sequences as a lot of these songs were spoofing the anti-Semitism that was going on at the time. And so there was some really brilliant commentary throughout some of these musical numbers. And when you have talented actors headlining these songs, you know the songs are going to be top notch, uh, especially Liza Minnelli. And, if you're not familiar with her, she is the daughter of Judy Garland, and I talked about her when I reviewed New York, New York for the Martin Scorsese Marathon, and I thought she was fantastic in that film, and in Cabaret, she's no exception. She won an Oscar for this movie, and especially on the musical side, I think the Oscar, I think probably was well-deserved, especially on the musical side, uh, some of the sequences that she was singing in the film, like the closing number especially, was awesome. Clearly Cabaret had to have been released during the New Hollywood era because of the subject matter that it did address. Now, movies in the past addressed the Nazis and anti-Semitism before, but I think Cabaret kind of did it in a more realistic way, and a lot of it felt a lot more believable because of the grounded realism of the film. And that's definitely a departure from other musicals, like earlier musicals was a lot more fantastical 
and larger than life and I, I, the tractors of the musical genre I hate people breaking out in the middle of the street in the song which would never happen in real life and then also there's other aspects of the story dealing with the personal lives of these characters uh, dealing with subject matter that wouldn't have been discussed during the Hayes Code era uh, like one of the one of the uh, subplots involves uh, one of Liza Minnelli's lovers who has a bit of a sexuality problem. Like she, he doesn't know whether he's in love with Liza Minnelli or he's in love with men. He's a bi he's dealing with bisexuality, and that was definitely something that wasn't really explored in a lot of movies back then. Also, there's a subplot involving abortion, which was never discussed in a lot of earlier films as well. And it definitely led to some very raw conversations that made the movie a lot more believable than it had any right to be. You, you don't see too many musicals that has a more realistic tone to it. I think Fiddle on the Roof kind of did, but it still fell in the conventional trappings. But Cabaret is definitely one of the most believably made musicals I think that we've ever seen. And I'm kind of glad the movie exists because of that. And the performances, like I said, are really good. Especially Liza Minnelli. And Joe Gray was a scene stealer. He's more of a background character than I expected. I thought he'd have a little bit of a larger role. He's just a part of the musical sequences in the Kit Kat Club. But his sequences were highly entertaining. And I enjoyed what he brought to the film. Now, I wasn't blown away by this movie. And I'm going into my negatives. And my biggest issue with Cabaret is my lack of engagement with the characters. While the movie had some interesting things to say, it had some sharp social commentary in there, my main issue with the film is the movie doesn't really have a character you can root for. Uh, Liza Minnelli, of course, is the main character of this film. And while she's great as a performer, uh, as a character, I found her hard to root for because she's depicted as like this selfish brat that wants to do anything, that wants to do whatever it takes to rise to the top and does not consider what others think to get there. And I just had a disconnect with the character because of the selfish ambitions that she had throughout. And that goes all the way up till the end of the movie. And it was kind of hard rooting for her throughout the film. Even though Liza Minnelli is great in the role and she has some fantastic musical sequences. Kind of like an issue I had with De Niro in Minnelli's other film, New York, New York. Uh, kind of similar there, but uh, for different reasons with different circumstances. But it's kind of similar in the way it's kind of hard rooting for both of those characters. I do highly respect Cabaret. I think I respect it more than I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it on the musical level. I think some of the character decisions soured the experience a little bit, but I enjoyed the songs. I enjoyed the realism of the movie. It had an ending that kind of struck me, honestly, because it ended on this surprisingly somber note, but then you realize the what was going on at the time the movie was set and you're like oh things are gonna get out of hand quick and I thought it was a solid movie I, I I did enjoy Cabaret I don't think it's one of the best musicals I've ever seen I do respect it for its realism and there are some fantastic sequences in there and if you're not a hardcore musical fan and you don't like the fantasticalness and the razzle dazzle of your conventional musicals I think you might enjoy Cabaret. Cabaret is drowned in that realism and it has a more believable story. And the musical numbers are set within the musical setting of the Kit Kat Club. I think you might enjoy Cabaret. I liked it for what it was, although I've seen better musicals. And I, I like I said, I think I respect the movie more than I love it. I'm going to give Cabaret a three and a half out of five stars, and on the 100 point scale, it's getting a 67 out of 100. So that wraps up my review of Cabaret as part of my pre-1980 classic review series. Hope you enjoyed this video, and every month I review two classic movies with a specific theme. 
as part of a way to share more love and appreciation for older classic films which tend to get glossed over on YouTube. Join me in the month of December where I'll be reviewing two classic Christmas films, uh, Tis the Season. I, want, I think the next one I'm going to be tackling is the 1954 musical White Christmas starring Bean Crosby and Danny Kaye. Definitely look forward to that review coming very, very soon. If you've seen Cabaret, let me know down in the comments below what you thought of the film. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Were you mixed on it? Whatever your thoughts are, please be civil and respectful of others. And if your comments are respectful, your comments can be potentially seen in future comment shout out videos. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Click that subscribe button to see more content and the notification bell next to it to be notified of future videos. If this is your first video, besides movie reviews, I also do TV reviews, trailer reactions, ranking videos, and other fun stuff along the way. I have some more videos planned for you soon. Hope you all have an amazing day. God bless, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!